The next item this evening is a presentation of the highest honor that ILA bestows. But I'm sure we all agree that we all owe the highest honor of all to the patriot we bid farewell to last month. Please, right now, turn your attention to the screens for a brief tribute to our own NRA president, Charlton Heston. He was an actor, an author, a civil rights champion, and a patriot. He didn't just speak the word of God. He spent his life defending the freedoms God gave us. When the Second Amendment came under the fiercest attacks in history, Heston was there. On TV, in auditoriums, colleges, conferences, congressional hearings and rallies, he took your beliefs to America, and America listened. Because he wasn't an elected politician, he couldn't be unseated from the debate. And because he was a household name, he got the ink and airtime the Second Amendment so desperately needed. Never before had anyone been elected to three consecutive terms as president of the NRA. But never before had any one person been so influential, so persuasive, and so utterly revered. Our issues this Sunday morning, the National Rifle Association has a new leader, and he is talking tough. On Close Up this morning, Charlton Heston, the Academy Award winning actor, has long been active in the campaign for personal rights and freedoms, especially the right to bear arms. Later today, he's expected to be elected president of the National Rifle Association. I've accepted a call from the National Rifle Association of America to help protect the Second Amendment. I would like to restore for the NRA the national approval that it held for 133 years. Heston's life was a life of fighting for the right. And these things keep coming up where people say, Chuck, you've got to do something about this. In 1963, I marched on Washington with Dr. Martin Luther King to uphold the Bill of Rights. It's one of the proudest moments of my life. Supporting civil rights then was about as popular as supporting gun rights now. And Heston paid a price for his conviction. Having been called everything from ridiculous to duped to brain injured, Sennel, crazy, crazy old man. Spike Lee ridiculed my work in behalf of the Second Amendment to the Constitution. Spike said I should be shot for my beliefs. This guy isn't Ben Hur, he's the devil incarnate, he should shut up. Coming from today's media, that could be construed as a compliment. Why the media attacks? Maybe because when he saw hypocrisy and distortion and dishonesty, Heston called it as he saw it, to set the record straight. Whether it was the press... How can we entrust to you the Second Amendment when you are so stingy with your own First Amendment? Or gun control groups... Anti-gun organizations that wouldn't know a semi-auto from a sharp stick. Or even the White House. What President Clinton's not telling you about the crime bill should be a crime. So does Bill Clinton tolerate a level of gun deaths to further his political agenda? You decide. That took courage far too rare anymore, a virtue he fought for on college campuses, where young minds often learn wrong ideas. But telling us what to think has evolved and telling us what to say. So telling us what to do can't be far behind. Don't let America's universities serve as the incubators for a rampant epidemic of this new brand of McCarthyism. Why do you? who are supposed to debate ideas, surrender to their suppression. As long as you shrug your shoulders and abide it, then, by the standards of your grandfathers, you are cultural cowards. Democracy is dialogue. And it was a dialogue of which Heston never tired. Still, I go out on the road, catching red-eye flights, speaking at rallies in Seattle, eating pancakes and Peoria and rubber chicken in Des Moines. Yet I choose to engage in this debate. Why? Because it matters. Personal freedom, individual rights. Charlton Heston fought for all that's good and right and sacred about America. It's been said that the creation of the United States is the greatest political act in history. I'll sign that. The Bill of Rights wasn't cut into stone tablets. 
but the text surely has that same righteous feel to it. I say that the Second Amendment is, in order of importance, the First Amendment. The right to keep and bear arms is the one right that allows rights to exist at all. That's why I so deeply love this great nation and the Constitution that defines it. And it was that love that drove Heston with more energy than a man half his age. At Get Out the Vote rallies in cities across America, he urged gun owners to vote for their freedoms above all else. So, as Americans gather again to make this magnificent machinery work, remember, freedom runs in every race. Let's vote freedom first. Al Gore lost in 2000 and John Kerry lost in 2004. Thanks in large measure to the manpower, membership growth, and grassroots activists that Charlton Heston had marshaled as NRA president. Heston is as much known for his activism as he is for his acting. What are you most proud of in that area of your life? I suppose uh, the leadership of the NRA. Why? I believe in the right to keep and bear arms. I'm on the side of the, the men who invented the country. They believed in the Second Amendment, and I believe in it too, after the last election. Uh, when Mr. Gore was defeated. To his credit, he said, it was the NRA and Chuck Heston that did it. And you're proud of that? I am. As a titan of the stage and screen, it's tempting to draw parallels to Charlton Heston's many characters and say he was a man leading his people, fighting for the right, defending the downtrodden, challenging today's pharaohs. But that would reduce to caricature the real character and real life of a real patriot. It's a lot easier to play a leading man than it is to lead a movement. But Charlton Heston could do both. A man whose patriotism was a state of being, not a brief burst of sentiment reserved for the 4th of July, but the steady allegiance of a lifetime. A man whose devotion to principle was a primer for how to be an American patriot. Patriotism, a word more often ridiculed than revered, needs Americans who teach us what it means for each new generation. Charlton Heston gave us the tools, taught us the truth, and showed us the way. Don't be shamed or startled into lockstep conformity by seemingly powerful people. We just need to unite and then disobey, boycott. No more leaders who toy with the truth and get away with anything. Petition them. Oust them. March, embargo, raise your hand, stand up, and speak out. We were right, and we've been right all along. Shout down, defy, refuse to sit in the back of the bus. Raise the roof with your outrage. Banish them. Interrupt, overwhelm. In our revolution, a flame of freedom that cannot be stamped out. Raise hell to the heavens, hear this. From my cold, 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 dead, 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 dead. dead. And from my cold, dead hands. While history will judge his place in theater, we already know his place in the constellation of American patriots. Charlton Heston was freedom's leading man. You know, Charlton Heston truly loved every one of you for standing up for this freedom. And I know you loved him back. And I know he's proud tonight as he looks out on this banquet. This is the largest banquet in the member banquet in the history of the National Rifle Association. Believe me, he's proud of everybody in here tonight.